Hi, my name is Eugenia and if you clicked on this video, then you're probably struggling with meditation as much as I do. Fear not, because we're going to discuss why that might be the case and how to fix it. A few disclaimers before we're going to get started. First, this video is not going to provide you a ready-made answer. I want to use this opportunity to explore different scenarios rather than come up with a solution. Also, keep in mind that I'm not a monk, nor a meditation guru, I'm just a mere mortal with my personal experience that I use as a background for this video. Second, meditation is a powerful tool that can be used in many different areas of life. However, I meditate almost exclusively as part of my spiritual practice and to maintain my emotional hygiene. I usually view these two as complementary. So if your meditation goals are different from mine, this video might simply not speak to you. If you decide to give it a try anyway and stick around, you're welcomed and let's get started. The first thing in our menu today is overstimulation. This one might come across as obvious, since for many people meditation is a boring exercise. I don't remember where exactly I saw this quote, but it basically goes like boredom stems from agitation and agitation stems from overstimulation. Now what the heck do I even mean by overstimulation here? To better understand it, let's break it into three parts. To begin with, many of us work in front of screens, aka in a digital world. We're constantly bombarded by various types of information coming from all sources and tools, and it might be hard to dissociate from. Second, the architecture of modern cities is overwhelming by itself. There's always cars, people rushing for whatever reason, there screaming ads, as I usually call them, that might be too bright in color and a bit too much emotionally charged. This is all a stimuli for our nervous system to take in and respond appropriately. Third, we spend our pastime by either watching the TV or scrolling on social media. By the end of the day, we have accumulated so much information in our system that a simple observation of our immediate environment which meditation is, might come across as boring. This is why this increased threshold for stimuli might be one of the reasons of why meditation isn't working anymore. Let's move on onto the second reason, which I identify as the block on spirituality. There seems to be this odd attitude towards spirituality that, on one hand, Western countries have tried their best to eliminate religions and claim them as inferior in knowledge and value. On the other hand, the whole 20th century has been marked with the rise of different systems of belief and alternative religions, which only proves our inherent need for spirituality. And everything that works on a societal level usually manifests itself in individuals as well. So many of us have inherited this internal battle between taking spirituality as part of our life and dismissing it. I definitely struggled with this internal fight and still do to a degree. When I first discovered spirituality for myself, which was in my early 20s, it was hard to accept it as an integral part of my life without plunging into all these weird assumptions I used to have about religions and religion people. And the same might apply to you. So your resistance might be coming from this internal fight between your need for spirituality and your desire to reject it. Here comes my favorite part, identity crisis. We'll have had it, we're all gonna have it, it's just a natural part of life and there's absolutely nothing to worry about. However, the issue here is that when you go through this process, it makes you question a lot of parts of your life and re-evaluate them. So the meaning that you might have been attributing to meditation might not be applicable anymore. If that's the case, I suggest you just give yourself some grace and Take it easy and try to explore new meanings of meditation and try to introduce these new meanings into your life. 
And here I should probably say shout out to my fellow people pleasers because as you know, people pleasing makes you put the needs of others above your own. If you're struggling with people pleasing and you're looking for ways to work through that, I have actually created a video about that and I'm gonna link it somewhere here or there or just somewhere. If you're struggling with putting your needs first, then the main reason with your meditation issues might be the fact that you don't have a dedicated time and space for it. If you've always been putting flexibility above your own plans, then you know that it's hard to stick to your own promises. And here, the only thing I can recommend you is to force yourself to say no to plans with others if you already made plans for yourself. Last but not least, the reason that people quite often mention and that still stays true and relevant is the fear of facing yourself. We all want to perceive ourselves as nice and good people. And I think the majority of us, if not all of us, are indeed kind-hearted and have good intentions in mind. However, the harsh reality is that we all have our dark sides and we all have toxic traits. The present narrative, however, shifts this focus and triggers into believing that it always others who are toxic and it always others who are bad people which makes it truly impossible to face our own negative sides. And this is how it's related to meditation. Subconsciously, you might realize that the whole practice will trigger the process of questioning yourself and will eventually lead to identity crisis if your identity was built on perceiving yourself as a nice person. So the only thing to say here is just get some courage and finally face yourself and your shadow side. A very valid question now would be, okay, how do I move forward? And as I said, I'm not a meditation teacher, so I'm only gonna share things that have worked for me. So here are my top three tips. First, get super clear on your priorities and resources. If you struggle with the whole concept, there is a brilliant exercise in the book Think like a monk. Jay Shetty suggests to draw a table with two columns. In the left column, you're gonna put your core values or things that you consider an integral part of your life. The right column is going to be reserved for an energy audit. And what you will have to do is you will have to track how much time and effort you put into all of the actions that you perform throughout the whole week. And things like sleep or working that tend to take quite a lot of time, with them you only track the deviations. This exercise is rather eye-opening. I personally consider myself to have a high level of awareness and yet the results were pretty mind-blowing. So if you're struggling to understand why you never have time for anything, meditation included, this exercise might provide you with an answer. At the same time, it's pretty natural to get overwhelmed with everything life throws at you. If you are dealing with many different projects and issues in your life, give yourself that break, but also provide yourself with a structure. Let's say you take this half a year or year break from meditation. Make sure to have dedicated time and space for your practice once this break is over so nothing gets in the way of your meditation practice. Number two, adjust. I'm a huge believer that everything can be adjusted to meet your individual needs. We all are familiar with this quote that if you don't have 15 minutes a day to meditate, then you have to meditate for an hour. However, it stems from an assumption that everyone has the same amount of free time, mental and physical health, and so on and so forth, which might be not true. There's definitely no need to go extreme. Try to look for ways to incorporate the practice of staying present into your daily life. You probably commute to work, so use this time to be present during your journey. Don't use your earplugs, don't scroll on your phone, try to be there and pay attention to your immediate environment. Really, meditation doesn't have to be reserved to sitting alone in a quiet room and observing your thoughts. The whole idea is to stay present and what's the better way to increase your awareness than by implementing it into your daily life? Number three, push through. 
Sometimes you have to be strict and force yourself to do things that you might not want to do. Meditation, unfortunately, is one of them. In the beginning of your journey, you might be motivated to sit down on your mat and meditate for minutes or hours or how long it takes you. However, the more you progress on your journey, the more it becomes about discipline and not about motivation. And the only way to cultivate discipline is by doing the same thing over and over and over and over again. And this is everything I have to say on the topic. Let me know if you have any further ideas. I would be really keen on hearing those. I hope you found this video useful and have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.